Okay, good morning. Today we will continue with chapter five. Pneumatic system, multi actuator circuit. Yeah, can you see? Uh, can you hear my voice? Yes, sir. I already uploaded this and uh, the slide for your use. Uh, we have seen in the previous chapter single actuator circuit. Okay, so you normally will have only one cylinder or, or two cylinder, but you can also have a multi cylinder. Multi means is more than two. Okay, so two and above. You can have as many as a cylinder possible. Okay, so no limit for cylinder as long you have the circuit and the components to control it okay so most of the practical pneumatic or hydraulic circuit uh, uses more than one cylinder uh, or we call it as a multi-cylinder so uh, you can see here they are operated in specific sequence to carry out a desired task for example to drill a wood component uh, first, we need to clamp and then only we can drill. So you have a few sequence. So it depends on your application. You need to have the correct sequence. Uh, so I think before this, uh, A plus, B plus, uh, B, uh, a, B minus, A minus. Uh, so you need to have that. Uh, so if your sequence is the most important part. So if you don't follow the sequence, uh, so you can do the application. So if you want to operate it, you need to operate it in a specific sequence. So that is very important. Okay. So we can only unclamp the cylinder if and only if the drill is withdrawn away from the workspace. So end sequencing of the movement of the clamp of cylinder and cylinder which carries the drill is important. This sequencing is carried out by actuation of appropriate final control valve like directional control valve. So uh, here you can see, so it mentioned that, so we need to have the correct sequencing. Correct sequencing uh, before we can, uh, we can do anything. Okay, so before you construct the circuit, you as an engineer and uh, for the assessment uh, for the exam or what, you need to understand how the thing going to work. If, uh, if the question say drilling, uh, drilling, you normally you need to have uh, at least two cylinders, one cylinder to hold the workpiece, uh, one cylinder then it need to drill. So after drill, the drill goes back. Then only you uh, release the work, work piece. So the <coughs> okay. And sorry, still coming in. Please come before eight eight zero three. Because if not, it will keep on appearing for me to accept. Okay. <clears throat> okay, the position of the cylinder is sensed by the sensors like limit switches, roller or cam operated valve. Uh, so uh, end position of the cylinder. I think either the thing or could I can distance rule. So the uh, distance rule is used to detect the end position. So at which position the the, the particular cylinder is available. So based on that, you will gonna can. So when the cylinder reaches a particular distance, uh, it will activate another sequence. Uh, so normally it's like that. Okay, so sequential motion of cylinder. 
Okay, it is possible to have the following sequence of operation with two cylinder. So, selalunya cylinder, dual cylinder macam ni lah. B plus, B plus, A minus, B minus. Uh, so, this sequence is uh, for the application of lifting and shifting, shifting of part in two direction. Okay, then we have A plus, B plus, A minus, B minus. So, more on the clamping. Okay, and the stamping. So, reverting. We have a, a plus, A minus, B plus, B minus. So this is more on the feeding and injection of part. Okay, so you can see how, uh, so this uh, picture is having three cylinders. So they already gave the name. Uh, cylinder A, so you have a magazine, so you, the cylinder A, push the magazine to the area, working area, then uh, when you push, it will hold the piece, then it, uh, cylinder B will stamp, uh, go back, then cylinder A, retract, then cylinder C, extend to push the workpiece to the bin, then cylinder C will reflect back. Okay, so you can see the sequence here. Okay, our cylinder A extend and stay in one place, then retract, stay in the retractor position, then the sequence will reach. So from here you can interpret how the system works. Okay, so multi actuator circuit. Uh, so how you can design your circuit. Uh, this is one of uh, important way. Okay, so I think before this, in the lab, uh, you already familiar with classical method. So classical methods, like we need to study. Uh, you start from down lah. You just start from compressor. Right? Uh, tapi when you draw, you will start from cylinder. You will see later lah. Macam mana kita nak buat. Okay. So there are various ways, various method of drawing a cylinder or designing. Kita as design. So when you are constructing a, a circuit, so you cannot be same with others. Uh, so, kalau dalam exam, you buat macam kawan you, I know you, hero. Because this is a design question. Uh, so, macam mana you nak design something 100% sama macam uh, another person. Uh, so, I don't think so is possible. Mesti akan ada slight uh, differences. Okay, so, uh, there, there is no universal circuit design method that suits all types of circuit. Method are commonly used for compound circuit, but would be too expensive for simple circuit. So these are five common methods used by engineering, and they are given below. Uh, selalunya kita gunakan classical method, cascading method, step counter method, logic design method. Yani dia macam di, um, digit lah. Okay, then you have a combinational. Okay, for your syllabus, kita cuma can discuss on this four. Okay, the last two will not be discussed. Okay, so uh, as stated here, uh, not all method will be suitable for everything. So you need to know when to use classical method. Bila nak gunakan cascading method. So bila nak gunakan step counter method. So I think the day lab pun, um, Ada yang buat cascading method. Yeah, because uh, saying uh, that there's a signal overlap. Uh, boleh juga. So, no problem. But actually, if it's a simple circuit, you boleh settle gunakan classical method idle ruler lever. Uh, so, itu yang you tengok. You tukar uh, symbol dia. Uh, pada ruler yang macam bentuk tangan. So, you can solve the method. And the problem.
Okay, so kita tengok one by one. Okay, we will see one by one classical method. So we start with classical method. What is classical method? So classical means uh, common method lah. Method yang selalunya digunakan. Okay, so in classical method, circuit design is done by use the general knowledge of pneumatic following the sequence through intuitively. In general, step involved, write down the sequence and draw the motion diagram. To draw in cylinder and control valve and complete the circuit. Okay, so mula-mula you kena lukis the sequence uh, gunakan apa yang you belajar in chapter 4. In chapter 4, you know, you have a narration, uh, a simple narrative, you have a control chart, you have a distance, step diagram. So, ada banyak lah. So, all that you can use to uh, draw, macam plan lah. You tulis dulu, so what are the inputs, what are the outputs that are required, what is the sequence. Uh, so you look at the model, uh, then only you start to draw the circuit. So selalu ni waktu draw tu, kita akan start dari cylinder. Kita look at, okay? So this application requires, this. so you draw the cylinder. Oh, this is a double acting cylinder. So you draw two double acting cylinder. Then you go to the control valve that will control the cylinder. And you go down uh, until... Okay, so we we'll see one example. We'll look at an example the case. Okay, so normally in a, in the exam we will give something like this. Okay, so two slider are used to transfer part from a magazine to a coil. When a push button is pressed, the first slider extends. A first slider maksudnya kita bagi nama. Ah, selalunya they follow alphabetical order. Okay, so we'll start with A, then with B. Okay, pushing the part from the magazine and the and position it in preparation for transfer to the second cylinder to the outfit tube. Once the part is transferred, the first cylinder retract followed by the second. So confirmation of all extended and retracted position are required. Uh, so this is the case of confirmation. Confirmation of all extended and retracted position. Apa maksudnya? anyone so what is the uh, what it means by this statement uh, confirmation of all extended and retracted positions are required anyone not try is it yes. use the sensor yes uh, so you need to use a sensor uh, to check whether Slender A is extended or not, or slender A is uh, retracted or not. Uh, and I think it's like a distance rule. Uh, so that's why you got the confirmation. Why this confirmation is needed? What for look and confirmation? Ni? What? What will it try? Answer. What for confirmation in the look? What will happen if no confirmation is checked? Yeah, just try this. So no right or wrong. Anyone? Okay. Panggil nama ke? Fitri Akim. Will you try? Ada Fitri Akin. Ada Fitri Akin. Kita boleh ambil Akin dan selama macam ni. Not, not in the class. Ada F3 Akin.
Tadi. Lukman Nurakim. Ada Lukman Nurakim. Semua tadi. Ada dalam kelas tapi tadi. Kalau Jun Tik Nasa. Dan dan. Okay, Muhammad Akmal. Nah, macam ni saya nak ambil attendance Terus semua masuk tapi tak Terus tadi Mama Fawaz Ya sir hmm, Ada Nak try Fawaz Kenapa perlukan confirmation? Macam ni, I bagi quiz in between lectures. So, tak answer? Tak answer. Fawaz ada, Fawaz. Ni macam cakap. Mama Aika. Mama Atim. Mama Ikwan. Mari tak ada ya. Baik. Tapi sampai baru. Tapi ada quiz kan. Okay. It's okay. I will continue. Okay. So please. Please study. Saya tak kisah pun. You study. You call my name ke sir? Ya? Yeah? You call my name ke sir? Ha, baru nak sahut. Oh sir, I go to toilet. Okay. Saja je panggil nama. Oh sorry sir, sorry sir. I go to toilet tadi. Hmm, okay. Tak, thank you. Sorry sir, sorry sir. Okay, so... All of you, please, please uh, study lah. Because I know it's challenging to to study online. But life must go on. So it's up to you whether you want to be there or not. So I ta rugi apa pun, I still get my salary. But I try my best. Okay, to give whatever I can lah. Right. If you, you are not studying, that's up to you. Not joining class. I memang tak ada, tak rugi apa-apa. Okay, but it's very discouraging lah. Uh, when you call me, mesti tak ada. Uh, so, not nice lah. Okay. We need to be true to ourselves then. I'm true to my profession, so you need to true, be true as a student lah. Okay. Because it's all based on trust. Okay. Uh, I'll just uh, continue. Okay, so confirmation of all extended and retracted positions are required. So why you need to have the confirmation? Because if you don't have confirmation, you cannot start the next sequence. Okay, so you need to have a sequence in order uh, to 
run the operation. Okay, so yang yang tu penting lah. Okay. We'll see for this example, example 5.1. Okay, how, how you can answer this question? Okay, so you need to start step by step. I always encourage the like example, look is step by step like this. Okay, first write the statement of the problem. Okay, so let it be the first cylinder. Okay, and second cylinder. So A cylinder A is for pushing, the B is for feeding. Okay, so you have two cylinder. So uh, with the positional sketch. In the positional sketch, so you see you have a workpiece, you have a cylinder, um, so it's pushing, then feeding. Okay, so cylinder B then extend and stem. Okay, uh, okay this line. First cylinder A, extend and bring the uh, under the stamping station where the cylinder B is located. Meaning you let something here, your cylinder will extend, it will push to this zone. Uh, then it will hold the workpiece. Then, uh, okay. then the B then extend and stamp the job. Uh, you need they can extend, do the stamping work. Then the E then return back. Then, at least in the B extend. Cylinder A can return back only after cylinder B has extended fully. So there's something wrong because it's a feeding and I check. Cylinder A extend and bring under stamping station. Where's cylinder? Okay, so you need the extend, it moves the work piece here. Cylinder B then extend and stamp the job. Okay, so I need the old work piece. So let me do the stamping work. Bring the A can return back only after cylinder B has retracted fully. Uh, but they are just a little mistake because so it's confusing. The meaning this is A plus B plus B minus A minus. Then you, you need to understand this part first. How, what is the uh, problem like? You look at any, then you draw the positional layout. Then step three, represent the okay. Yeah, purple. Uh, I think my third, I think you're getting a feeding. Feeding, actually this uh, picture is Supposed to be stamping. Feeding is transfer. Uh, you transfer to other place. You feed, feed something. Feed. Supply barang. Supply barang. Uh. So meaning that is that is platform A to platform B. So you are feeding. You are pushing using a cylinder from a platform A to platform B. So meaning you are giving something. So that is what we call as feeding. Eh? Tapi the case ini uh, is supposed to be a stamping. Uh, so yani you to cut the stamping. So cylinder A pushing, cylinder B stamping. So macam ni, uh, yani dia masih ada sedikit misleading lah. So pasti the statement and the diagram showing the same info. Okay, thank you sir. Step three, represent the control task using notational form. What is the notational form? Anyone? Okay. Uh, what was it, sir? So what is notational form? Oh, as in professional control. Uh, notational form means like you are writing down the sequence in like a uh, written form, in notes, short notes, basically. Okay, so how you can write uh, for this part in short form? 
the idea. For this new method, how you get in the notational form? Uh, you write the A plus and B plus, like the extension and the retraction? Yes. Yeah. Because if not, you need to write cylinder A advancing or cylinder A is extending. So actually, to simplify it, you just write A plus. So we totally understand. So A plus means cylinder A extend. Uh, so A minus is a cylinder A retract. So this is A plus, A minus, B plus. B minus, so if you have cylinder C, C plus, C minus, all that are, we call as a notational form. Okay, so you assign this in step three. Okay, for this sequence, uh, uh, clamping and stamping, so it's A plus, B plus, A minus, B minus. So once you settle this, you draw the displacement step diagram. Uh, so if you don't know how to draw displacement step diagram, you go chapter one part. I think we we have studied on that. Uh, so you cannot have uh, both at the same time, unless you have a special kind of control uh, running simultaneously, uh, slowly one after one. Okay, so cylinder A start the re step one. Okay, step one. Step one is A plus. A plus then the maintain. Uh, so make sure this is a thicker line. Okay, thick line. Okay, so A plus, then you maintain. Okay, step two, B plus, uh, A maintain. Step three, uh, A minus, B maintain. Step four, B minus, A, A maintain in the retractor position. Then the step continues. So that's why we wrote here, step five equals to one. Okay, then step five. Uh, yeah, Nicola, you know, I do case displacement time diagram. Lah. So if time is involved. If you just your x exists, do you to calculate the time? Uh, so, meaning all these uh, kota, ni, they have berdasarkan masa. Okay, so if six seconds, maybe the box will be longer. Uh, so, if four seconds, maybe a bit shorter. So, you have the information yang you boleh masukkan. So this is step five. Then step six. To analyze and draw the pneumatic circuit. Uh, so you just settle the basic part, step one to five. Baru you masuk ke drawing. Lalu kita lupa yang bagian yang depan ni. So we like, oh, we, I don't want to waste time. Actually, when you draw that, it will give you like uh, indicate uh, guide so that you don't make mistake. Sama lah macam si programming dulu. Okay, how many of you do flowchart? Before you start your coding, berapa ramai yang buat flowchart? Ingat lagi tak? You all belajar si programming dulu. Yeah, we used to do flowchart. Uh, you need to do flowchart. So no, even the elite programmers did what flowchart so that they uh, run from what they want to do lah. Uh, so I I don't know whether you have uh, experience in this or not. So when you do flowchart, maybe it take like five minutes of your time or uh, ten minutes, but it keep you stay in in the line. So you can you you will this kind coding to Japan uh, because you already have a guide like step one to step five study. Similar in pneumatic also you are doing the same. So you draw the, uh, the basic stuff first. You you list down or uh, you already plan everything. But you start your uh, drawing the pneumatic script. So it will be really helpful now for you. That's why even in the exam, nanti, I encourage you to go step one to step five dulu. And then only you start. So one one thing, you will get more marks. Another thing, uh, it will help you to finish on time. 
Allah ta you like yeah ni ke or wolf ni ke so you always you left confusion okay so step 6 analyze and draw on your matrix circuit step 6.1 uh, you check dulu apa input signal uh, normally input signal will come from where input signal selalunya kita dapat dari mana uh, compressor In, no no i mean not for the circuit uh, input si signals maksudnya uh, to start the sequence like push button some mm -hmm. levers uh, so you, you normally kita bagi input melalui push button and roller valve uh, normal circuit lah so roller valve tu kita panggil as limit switch it's a limit switch kita letak roller valve lah but if you letak pun tak apa as long the label is correct the a0 a0 normally will be zero means retracted one means extended uh, ataupun you boleh uh, tulis one as one uh, macam dalam lab one as two uh, if but if like normally for your application it will left maximum three cylinders uh, so you boleh letak lah a0 a1 b0 b1 c0 c1 kalau ada mouse slender, mouse slender lah. Di mouse slender, kami kita just bagi dalam lab ataupun dalam case study or in your tutorial atau dalam exam, selalunya maximum 3 lah. Because we don't want you to take too long in designing. Yeah. So that is the input signal. The input signal can be either mechanically or can be from the manually manually or uh, I think you all know lah macam mana nak bagi input signal kan uh, ada pneumatic link you, you can get tapi pneumatic tak perlu tulis dekat sini yang ni more kepada physical switch macam tu or push button ok then uh, output signal the output signal all the sequencing tadi okay, forward motion of cylinder A A plus return motion or retracted motion of cylinder A A minus dalam application ni ada empat output so you already know what are the input signal and what are the output signal then you link with all the displacement time step diagram okay. uh, A plus action generate signal uh, kalau A plus your fully extended cylinder A akan kena dekat A1 dia akan generate lah signal so A1 akan lead to B plus maka B plus I will trigger B1 I will start A, A minus motion sampai habis lah so after you finish it will continue back so all this information you boleh letakkan dalam your motion diagram your displacement step diagram you boleh letak tengok A plus tadi you just look at A plus B, B plus A minus B so dekat sini you sekalikan all the input you letak dalam ni ni okay, meaning after A plus uh, A, switch A1 will be active then uh, B plus starts if then uh, B1 will be active sampai habis so at the end it will go back to B0 to go back to the start lepas tu dia tulis dekat sini step 5 equals 1 kalau ada push button if it's continuous sequence ni akan continue lah kalau uh, it's only one sequence dia akan habis dekat sini it will go back to here it will wait, wait for your push button kalau you tekan push button balik it will start all the sequence then it will go back wait for the next sequence to start so all this information you boleh letakkan dalam chart-chart macam ni so you tengok chart selalunya kita malas nak baca uh, so it's always will be confusing and you have a lot of stuff uh, written uh, tapi when you represent in this kind of diagrams so it will be easier to understand 
Okay, can you really think of, okay, sequence A plus B plus A minus B minus. So if your sequence is A plus uh, B plus uh, B minus A minus, so you took a little uh, start. So in between is all the switching. Good. Input and output. Okay, so far, boleh follow? Ada soalan? Boleh, saya. Boleh, saya. Okay. So, step seven. Draw the power circuit. Okay. So, lepas you dah settle yang tu, then baru you start lukis. Okay, lukis. Lukis cylinder dulu. Okay, so draw the cylinder. So, application ni ada dua cylinder. Cylinder A, 1.0 ni tak perlu lah. Okay, cylinder A and cylinder B. Okay, so, and then, you draw the directional control bar. Uh, kalau yang ni single acting cylinder, it will be 3 over 2. Kalau double acting cylinder, it will be 5 over 2 or 4 over 2. So, look at dulu. Okay, then the other for 14 and for 12. And you can put 14 and 12. So you draw location in basic. Then mark the limit switch position of firstly the A and B. A0, A1. A0, B1. Yani slalunya I can follow the cylinder name. And jangan letak okay. ini, you letak A0 pula. It will be confusing. So just follow uh, whatever. Is thought lah. Okay, so A means here also A. Okay. So once you draw your cylinder and also direction control wall for the cylinder and also limit switch, why do you must look at sequencing? So tadi kita dah tahu, to start, memang your chart tu B0 kena ada lah. So meaning, it's already finished the sequence. Uh, so, to study step 5 equals to 1. Uh, so, B0 kena ada dekat sini and it uh, dia ada gambar dinding. So, meaning any on. So, it must be in the left hand side. Not try right hand side. Okay, meaning it's on lah. Okay, then kena ada yang surface ni. Okay, then you press the push button. And you pun dah on, so ada connection. You must look at sini, linda extend. Linda extend, dia kena dekat A1. Uh, A1 supposed to start linda and B. So A1 dia letak dekat sini lah. Dia kena, dia kena dia dekat sini, yang ni on, dia akan hantar signal, so linda B akan extend. Then kena dekat B1. So B1, uh, you tengok. Uh, kalau you nak dia start, uh, a plus, B plus, B minus dulu, uh, you letak dekat sini, B1. Uh, if you want cylinder A to retract first, yang ni you letak dekat sini. So B1. So this one on, jantar signal, so cylinder A retract. Retract, kena dekat A0. So A0, you letak dekat sini. Okay. So this is uh, how you can draw any explanation there lah. So you, you from this chart you must know how to explain in a, in a simple narrative. Yang point form bukan point form lah. Yeah, I think just an analysis. We will watch the Kajini. So this is uh, A plus operation. The A plus, so you tekan. You have the gambar tangan the Kajini, you tekan the push button, then it on. I think I, I explained that, but I explained it. So, what do you think of the Kajini? So, the little pass. Uh, from the cylinder is already start to extend. Uh, A0 dia akan padam. Sebab itu you tengok dekat sini tak ada gambar dinding. 
Kepres is already halfway. Nah, yang metal tu selalunya ada dekat ujung untuk detect. So, living switch akan ada metal kat dalam tu. So, jual check. Ada ke connection. That's how it can sense the end position. Okay, so dia dah lepas. Nah, macam ni B0 masih dekat sini kan. Ah, so, you ada gambar surface. So, you tekan yang ni extend. It will go. It will do A plus operation. Uh, so, we need cylinder A extend. Then, after that, B plus, uh, dia dah extend fully. A1 start. A1 start, uh, dekat sini ada gambar dinding. It will give a input. And cylinder B extend. Tengok, dia dah lepas. So, B, uh, B0 ada gambar dinding. Okay, so, it's already extended. Uh, so, it, it started a B plus operation. Uh, cylinder B extend. Then, A minus. So, they are extend fully B1 active. So, B1 active, uh, B1 ada gambar dinding. It will get send a signal. So, cylinder A akan retract. So, it retract. Retract fully, A0 akan active. Dia dah balik, A0 akan active. So, A0 ada gambar dinding. So, it will send a signal. Your cylinder B will retract. Okay, that is how the sequencing works. Okay, so that is all then. Any, any question yang kita faham? So, that's on the a classical way of designing a surface lah. Lalunya kita akan buat gunakan classical way. Kalau circuit tu tak uh, complicated. Okay, so any question? Soalan ke apa-apa? Entah faham? I think easy enough to understand, sir. Good. Okay, so we'll take five. Eight forty-five. We will start again at eight. We'll continue the slide. Meanwhile, if you have any question, you can ask.
Okay, we will continue. Okay, are you back? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, well, before I start, eh, memang I'm taking auto attendance using VBAC. So it will show how long you were in the meeting. Two minutes, two minutes. I mean, I think a lot of my dear am I. So please be careful because if audit and you know, I think you know, all this info, then they will question. We can consider you tardy. So you tardy this amount of uh, classes. Uh, you cannot take final. So don't push yourself to that line. So please be careful. Yes, so I know maybe the internet not okay or whatever reason. So I actually I have no problem. Because not uh not every time. I think uh, most of the universities around the world the Tagisabun Chapel and join lecture there. Yeah, if you want to learn, you join. If you want to learn, it's up to you. Right? During the exam. So you'll be evaluated. Uh, it will be tough if face to face. So OBE mode is still tough juga because you will reduce the time. Uh, you'll become stressed. So you also don't know. Uh, as I hear, I'll give in some like you. Thank uh, you now. I give in English. Then you made me give in some like you, right? So. Whatever you are doing, please make sure it's beneficial for you like the end. I mean, that we will like that. So you already have a job. But we try to help you all. First, I actually like, I can slowly need to talk again. don't know what they are doing. So don't know what they are teaching. Oh, so you maybe one day you will become a lecturer. One day you will become engineer. You go to company. Company shouldn't say, "Oh, ni pun tak tahu ke?" This is a basic thing. So this is the time that you need to learn lah. Okay. Just just to share lah with you all. Okay. So we'll continue. Signal overlap. What is signal overlap? Apa maksud signal overlap? Overlap tu apa maksud? Bertindih. Nah, bertindih. So meaning, it just it's all depends on signal kan. Jangan cakap like sensor, a sensor send a signal, they start another sequence. Ah, so signal overlap maksudnya. Your signal bertindih. Meaning, actually dalam line ni, yang signal ni apa benda? Dalam ni metik. When you give the signal, apa yang akan lalu dekat line ni? 12, 14. Air. Ah, so it's a compressed air. Uh, compressed air. So, kalau you bagi compress air dekat sini 10 bar, dekat sini pun 10 bar. So, what will this wall do? You tak dapat buat apa-apa lah. Because, uh, dia dua-dua pun opposite. Opposite, same power. So, dia macam, you tak dapat buat apa-apa. You just stop dekat sana. Full power. So if one side uh, 15 bar, one side 5 bar, uh, then you tahu lah, uh, maybe the wall will choose this side. Tapi dalam uh, pneumatic, it will be same because you already regulate the pressure. You already regulate the pressure, so we consider it, it will be same power. So 10 bar, 10 bar. So when you have signal overlap, what we will do, so, uh, you tulis dekat sini. This will not result in any change. Apa, uh, kalau dua-dua side ada signal overlap, this valve will not do anything. 
Dia tak ada power apa-apa sebab dia tak boleh switch. Dia tak ada, uh, if you apply one side, uh, dia boleh push to switch to this side or this side. Kan? Uh, but when you have a simultaneous two active signal appearing in both, uh, yang ni set, ini uh, ini set, ini reset. Kalau you nak tahulah apa benda ni. Selalu ni kita akan letak dekat sini uh, actuated and unactuated uh, port, pilot port. Uh, pilot port maksudnya port 14 and 12 lah. Okay. So this is due to the required sequencing of cylinder. So kadang-kadang dia boleh berlaku macam ni. Like in your lab one. As you will be wondering why the cylinder is not following the instruction. Uh, it is because of the signal overlap. I think uh, most of you dapat solve gunakan idle roller. If you tukar ke idle roller, idle roller only allow uh, one motion. Okay, so at the start, both signal A0 and B0. Uh, yang ni dalam contoh tadi lah. Yes, so appear at the same time. So if it appears at the same time, you cannot do the operation. So that is what we call as signal overlap. Dalam exam, dia boleh tanya, what is signal overlap? Uh, so you explain lah macam tu. Okay, with the, uh, uh, with the illustration. Okay, so when you have signal overlap, uh, apa countermeasure dia? So what is the countermeasure to avoid signal overlap? Apa langkah yang you kena buat? You want to try? Kalau ada signal overlap, langkah... Kalau signal overlap, I think you have to like use a... Another, another valve, another signal valve. No, I mean, what is what? Uh, what is the process? If you have signal overlap, you need to do this process to eliminate. I already give the answer, right? Signal elimination. This is already given here. Okay. So when you have a signal overlap, the countermeasure is signal elimination. You signal elimination, the maksud, you just, uh, out of the two input you get in the signal overlap, you just decide either one. So you eliminate one signal and you accept one signal. Baru your, your circuit will start to move. So you need to analyze the loop. You just observe that both side and the signal could be present simultaneously at the end, any instant of time. So, any instant of time meaning it happened together okay, at the same time. Okay, so, depending on the sequential operation of the cylinder. So, this does not permit further changes in the status of the valve. Maksudnya, valve view takkan berubah kalau ada signal overlap. This situation is termed as signal overlap. To overcome this problem, signal elimination techniques are used as listed below. Okay. So, kind of signal elimination, uh, you can avoid. Okay, you can avoid. Tapi dia ada banyak teknik. Okay, so dalam syllabus, your syllabus, we will study on the, uh, this I think you're familiar. But you don't know what actually is happening at the back. Then, Okay, so idle return lever limit switch. Yang, yang roller bentuk tangan tu. Yeah, like like uh, your end. Okay, yeah, so you can use that. If it's a simple. So idle return roller switch, you can gunakan only when the circuit is quite simple. Okay, quite simple. If the circuit is uh, complicated, kita akan gunakan cascading and step counter method. Yes. Cascading and step counter method. So, ini dua method ni adalah sangat penting. Penting. Tapi kita takkan cover this week. Okay, so this week I won't, I will let you all rest. Uh, so, I tak bagi add puzzle video. Because I think we still following the timeline dalam teaching plan. 
Okay, so next week I can adjust the shading. Then maybe step counter, I will give your video. Kalau I boleh ajar, I akan ajar lah. Dua-dua ni. But for both, I akan bagi video. So that you will watch and understand. Because kadang-kadang benda ni dia, dia kena tengok repetitively. For you to understand. So I will give both these videos also. Okay, so signal elimination technique, kita ada tiga jenis. We will see one by one. Ini ada satu example. For example, we have a clamping and reverting. Apa itu revert? So, if the question just give the application name macam clamping, reverting, you must must know what that means. Baru you boleh understand. Oh, you as Linda ni buat macam ni. Okay. Kalau you tak tahu apa itu revert, you memang akan faham lah. What is revert? Anyone? Revert. Baru nak google. Tahu tak apa itu revert? Saya beritahu lah. Combine something together. Yeah, combine something together using. So normally, how we will revert? The reverts. It's the pins. Ah, uh, you have like a pin. You have the revert. Ah, uh, revert plier. You need to put the thing inside. Then, so normally we will join two aluminium together. Kalau kita bilai you ada aluminium frame, thin cap ke ataupun Anything. So, we have an aluminium box or cupboard. Ah, so you can see no. There are a few things that are like a bullet. Used to join two aluminiums together. Kalau you can see no, there's a sliding door or sliding window. You can see no. Ada ada join. You can use the wood. You can use the wood as screw or bone. Gam upward lah. Jadi screw tu not necessary. The reverse can solve the problem. So that is what we call as reverting. We are doing two things together. Okay, so you need to understand what actually revert. Kalau uh, dalam exam di check up, uh, this operation is clamping and reverting. You understand that. So got other types of application juga lah. Uh, yang tu, you boleh tengok dekat chapter 4. Chapter 4, I think beginning, we have discussed about all the application. Uh, so, try to understand each each one of that. Okay, so dekat sini ada dua cylinder. Cylinder A. Uh, cylinder A is a clamping cylinder. Cylinder B is a... A clamping cylinder. So, that one. Well, the part X and the second cylinder and one X. So, cylinder A, clamping cylinder. Cylinder B, reverting cylinder. So, you will tahu lah dari sini. Okay, the reverting cylinder, retract and finally clamping cylinder, retract. Ah, so, yang ni operation dia apa? Dalam notational form. Based on this. A plus. What's the sequence? A plus, B plus, B minus, A minus. A plus, B plus. Kalau dia beritahu ada kes ni, the reverting cylinder retract first. So, reverting cylinder is B. So, A plus, B plus, B minus, A minus. Okay, so, that's how the uh, operation works. Okay, so, you boleh tengok. So, you draw the function diagram. For any switch, lah. This is in the one a one, the two a one, and then you have four switches. So you can see there is a signal overlap. The so signal overlap happens when uh, both one s one and one s two at the on position. 
is gear active. So here, uh, step one, you have a uh, overlap, and step three, you have a uh, signal overlap. Uh, so signal overlap ni dia boleh berlaku uh, because of your design macam tu. So because of your design problems, the overlap can happen, or it can be happen because your valve or component is faulty. Dia rosak. Kalau rosak pun signal overlap can happen. So you think, oh, oi, I already designed my circuit perfectly. Why still it's not moving? So we get we check the mechanical part. Di dalam tu dia dah rosak. So all your pneumatic component pun ada time limit kan? So dia ada dia punya tempo operasi. So that's why in the company we always do calibration. Calibration. Dia ada satu department yang dipanggil calibration. They will make sure all the equipment ataupun component yang digunakan dekat industri uh, to be calibrated within the given time. Last time I work in a German company. So memang dekat sana, I work in the calibration department. Mechanical lah. Uh, so our job is so daily we will check which equipment need to be calibrated. Dari equipment kecil until equipment yang besar. All must be calibrated and you need to have a calibration sticker. Lalu, last time I worked in B-Brown. B-Brown Medical. So, even the vernier caliper. Vernier caliper yang kita gunakan pun must be calibrated and you need to put the sticker. So the company tu ada beribu-ribu vernier caliper. All we will calibrate. Uh, we have the listing. We follow the SAP number lah. Dia panggil SAP number. Or oh, is a component number lah. Uh, in a register in the system. So we will go. We will check. Okay. Uh, even we, before we go to the department. The department already keep. Oh, uh, yani. So calibration dia dah expired. You need to recalibrate. Calibration is required for you to check whether the component is within the range of operation. So when you caliper, thermometer, open oven, so everything have a way of to calibration. Okay, so pneumatic one similar. So pneumatic one I cannot calibrate. So we need to check whether it's functioning well or not. When it's not, uh, not functioning well, so we need to issue a report. To issue a report, ask the company to replace the uh, unit. We will give a proper justification. Lah. For example, uh, maybe aging factor. So your the equipment is already like five years old. I think uh, it's reasonable to, uh, to replace. The company can replace. Or if it's like it's memang faulty to so report juga or the operator uh, spoil it to report juga so the companies when you go to industry i hope you all will experience all this lah nanti kalau you pergi ke routine work then no point lah uh, so you won't learn new thing so whatever you do later i think next year you akan pergi ke latihan industry you akan tengok saya juga nanti so, you need to go and relate with whatever you learn. Kalau dekat university pun kita learn apa-apa, so you just like study to pass the exam, so and then no point lah. But if you want to really understand whatever you learn, so you need to start relating. Okay, yang ni saya belajar dalam subjek unity. Yang ni saya belajar dalam subjek unity. Saya belajar dalam si programming. So, you all you need to relate. Okay, similar lah dekat sini. So, it can be happen. Uh, it can happen because of the pneumatic wall for apa lah. Yang related dengan pneumatic is faulty. So, it need calibration. So, you need to really check.
in the sec it will show like this i think the left it simple boli nam pali to you uh, then it becomes stress why is uh, i already did correctly uh, but it's not for functioning you think online ni kala dua dua line ni active this wall will not operate class about the sini pun ten bar the sini pun ten bar your cylinder cannot move because your wall cannot decide so this is a tipping point na one a1 and one a2 okay the cylinder one s1 and one s2 the active by i tapas dia tu ada So slide ni sebenarnya saya punya slide. That we prepare for another lecture last time. Uh, so I I tak pasti lah dia. As much as I can check, I tukar lah. Sebab tu I tak suka gunakan 1S1, 1E1. Letak je E. In the E. Kenapa nak, nak susahkan diri kan? 1E1 lah, 1S1 lah. So nanti you just tulis A. B. Dekat sini pun A, dekat sini pun A. I think it's not a good practice lah. So, kalau ada dua silinder, you ada 26 alphabet. So, you boleh control 26 silinder. Gunakan the alphabet yang ada. Kenapa nak stingy sangat kan? Look at the code. So, letak A, B. Easy to understand. So, dekat sini A kecil 0, A kecil 1. B kecil 0, B kecil 1. So, it's easier to understand. Jangan... Rasa, nak tanya? Ya. Yeah. Uh, biasanya memang dia akan just use two pistons kan? Or at least at max, only three pistons. Eh, sorry, uh, cylinder, not pistons. Uh, your cylinder, uh, your your diploma level, mostly mm. tiga lah. Dalam exam tiga. Mm hmm. So we won't give more because we we you need to answer within the given time, right? So if you have a four, uh, maybe the last assignment I will give you for your understanding. So about the assignment, you have the tempo masa yang lama, like one week or two weeks for you to submit. So maybe the last assignment I can give four for your. Uh, so because when you deal, you try you learn to control more. Cylinders. So, for you to control a, a lesser cylinder during your exam will be easier. Ah, uh, tapi dalam exam, so maximum I akan bagi dua ataupun tiga because of the time factors. Bukan yang I tak boleh bagi, I boleh bagi. But it depends on the assessment. Ada soalan lain? Okay, so you boleh tengok. So, when this step one, already have a signal overlap. Dia akan ada line biru tebal. So tadi kita tengok step 1 ada signal overlap and step 3 dua-dua pun on. See. So you ada signal overlap dekat sini. Okay, so all this must be eliminated. Okay, so earlier we saw on the classical method. Sekarang kita tengok classical method with either roller roller valve i don't written roller valve my is lagi pakai idle roller lah yang perkataan di keyword dia adalah idle dia kan ada gambar macam tangan ni dia just a normal roller lah the roller uh, roller lever limit switch ini adalah actually a limit switch. So, idle return. So, dia ada macam gambar tangan. Okay, so, 
you can use a classical method of designing gunakan idle return roller wall macam lab one hari tu okay, so how you can design okay, roller lever limit uh, type limit switch give mechanical signal which can be sensed in both direction movement of the pistol road cam the idle return roller limit switch give mechanical signal due to actuation of roller only in one direction so this is conveniently used in signal animation so roller uh, roller limit switch ni macam mana dia aktif macam mana dia akan on when 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 it will on lalunya lah based on apa yang you tengok all the way macam mana dia akan jadi aktif Ni answer uh, when there's an actuation in one direction uh, when you have it will be active yang ni, yang ni bukan air tanya yang ni ya yang yang normal roller oh. normal roller how uh, how it will be active so, yeah, i think your answer is for idle, idle return yang ni air tanya yang bagian yang gambar kiri ni normally ap, apa yang akan activate the roller Uh, maybe Spin. a button, button push or piston? Piston. Yeah, dalam pneumatic, piston lah sebab dia extend. Tapi roller limit, uh, limit switch ni, dia akan aktif when it sentuh uh, to any surface. Sebab tu kita lukis gambar surface tu. And meaning there's uh, contact. Uh, contact lah. So, uh, uh, roller limit switch roller lever uh, limit switch yang ni dia aktif when there's a touch it tak kisahlah any direction as long as the touch and it can push the button inside and activate this valve uh, dia akan set tapi yang idle return roller limit switch ada ada certain direction yang dia boleh accept uh, so normally you don't only except in one direction if uh, dalam pneumatic if it's, uh, it will either uh, accept extension or retraction and dia boleh detect so, kalau dia boleh detect uh, extension uh, retraction dia takkan uh, dia takkan kisah lah dia akan eliminate dia takkan kisah even though ada sesuai dia ada mechanical way of actuating lah Sebab itu dia tulis dekat sini uh, Idle return roller limit switch give mechanical signal due to actuation of roller only in one direction Ya ni based on mechanical Ini the movement lah Movement of the limit switch So when you can eliminate one direction So you can consider it in the signal elimination process So idle return roller valve consists of a 3 over 2 direction control valve fitted with an, uh, with an idle return roller mechanism. Uh, so only thing of any. So the the other one is a tangan. So if you want to move, you can move. and is attached to 3 over 2 direction control valve uh, so kalau your, your piston is coming this way yeah either the accept or uh, depends on the construction lah setengah tu dia accept macam ni dia akan bergerak ke belakang tapi dia takkan kena dekat switch ni uh, some uh, dia akan bergerak ke depan macam design ni dia bergerak ke depan so depends uh, later lah. Okay, so this angle is 30 degrees 30 degrees meaning it will be flexible boleh baca dekat sini saya tak suka baca-baca ni ok but I explain ok so boleh tengok slender extending slender dia extend uh, yang jenis ni Dia kena, dia akan bergerak ke sini, dia akan kena 
so this thing will push sebab dia bawah ni kalau you tengok bawah ni dia ada switch so kalau dia bergerak so this thing will move downward dia move downward dia akan on this switch nah, macam ni lah dia bergerak ke sini dia akan tekan switch ni and this valve will on nah, so the actuation is actually based on the switch Okay. Right. Uh, since it's a mechanical, it's based on movement. Lah. Dia bergerak, dia tekan. Because of the inch, the force will go downwards. And then tekan the field field. So, it's practically a roller valve. As long you can have any mechanism to uh, press this button to on or off. Uh, so, it will be acceptable. Uh, so, idle return roller. Is like this. So in this case, it goes uh, cylinder extend. You cannot depend on me. So roller valve me dia tekan. And jenis ni dia tekan. So if is uh, this thing move backward, they can tekan. So like itu ditulis di sini valve actuated. Then it goes. Dia pergi, yang ni dia disconnect. So dia lipat balik. Uh, so yang ni dia tak Uh, dia tak tekan the button lah dekat sini uh, so it's already go, go forward so cylinder fully extended extended uh, dia dah lipat so valve is released so maksudnya dia tak on then uh, go back time dia nak retract cylinder retract uh, retract dia tak tekan lah sebab dan ni dia tak kena pun dia retract So even though uh, dia kena, yang ni dia akan tarik ke belakang. Jenis ni lah. So dia akan tarik ke belakang. So dia akan jauh daripada switch ni. So try to imagine lah. Eh. Okay. So valve will not be actuated. Then, as leader fully retracted, valve is not actuated. Ha. So maksudnya, hanya dekat waktu dia extend, dia, dia detect. So that's why in your fluid stream, you can see the idle return roller. You can you can select based on the direction. You have the arrow the kabo. The arrow the kabo chani, so the arrow the chani. So you need to uh, you need to select. You want to check when it extend or retract. You can choose uh, the correct one lah. So that's how the idle return roller valve uh, functions. Okay, so if you use in the sequence earlier, can you ganti kan tadi roller biasa, you ganti kan dengan idle return roller. So sama macam lab you lah, so this thing. Okay, so you you replace because can you one s one and one s two is activating. So, 1S1 dekat sini, 1S2 dekat sini. So, kalau you boot, give input, uh, yang ni, you, one of you, you gantikan dengan idle return roller wall. Okay, so, it will only choose one. So, 1S2 ni, dia akan choose based on the particular direction. Okay, so, 2S1 also. Nama dia confusing lah, I oh. Dia, dia cuba bagi contoh macam ni. Uh, so try to relate lah. Try to understand. Okay, the main thing is. Uh, idle return roller valve is used to eliminate one of the signal. It only have a special. It's like adding more conditions. Uh, to the valve. For it to. Decide. Kalau condition ni met. Uh, met so condition ni met. Uh, baru dia accept. Dia baru bagi signal. Okay, so the use of roller lever valve with idle return to eliminate signal overlapping has the following disadvantage. Okay, so since this is uh, purely based on mechanical, we had a few disadvantages. Walaupun di boleh buat signal elimination, help us with signal elimination, but it has some disadvantage. Ada tiga disadvantage di sini. So the end position cannot be sensed accurately. Meaning dia ada false positive lah. Ataupun 
Positif maksudnya lagi dan false negatif sorry false negatif maksudnya dia actually benda tu ada tapi dia cakap tak ada he already reached the end position but he says that he didn't reach the end position kalau application you Uh, is particular about that and your end position then you left problem uh, so what you the eliminate love from the reach to the end position so it will left problem then function may be impaired as a result of contamination uh, contamination is because of anything make it anything much and dirt at the point apa Maybe kalau dia tak dapat detect, uh, dia macam jadi macam sensor rosak. You always hear right? sensor rosak. So, benda tu ada tapi dia macam uh, the, the function will be uh, yang ni dia based on uh, the end position, yang ni based on the function. So, uh, let's say you're supposed to do the sequence uh, A plus B plus uh, B minus, B minus dia cuma buat A plus B plus kemudian dia stop sebab yang ni saya roller valve ni dia macam tak tak bagi dia boleh have a problem lah in execute ni production dekat company production line is not working because at one sequence dia stop it will cause a lot of problem so fast control systems are not possible fast control system because ya ni dia based on mechanical so you need to go slowly um, dia kena baru dia detect so like it's a very rapid movement dia maybe dia akan overlook lah benda ni mostly all are related okay, mostly relating to dia tak dapat detect when you supposed to detect Pada ada soalan, any, any question? Ini cascading air tata syar ini. Jadi this slide is only until here. Ini tu ada ada soalan apa pun? Any question? Ada soalan, please ask. We are 30 minutes away. No no question. I hope you all learn something lah today. Yeah, related because all these are very important for your circuit design. Macam yang bagi tahu itu. So circuit design is the main thing that will be tested, not your theory. Macam semua dulu kita belajar mod theory, application circuit. So yang ni dia fully application. The application you can design circuit. So understanding all these sequence, all these steps are very important. They yeah, are very important in order for you to form marks. So please belajar lah. Nah, kalau tak belajar tu memang you takkan dapat score. So I memang help you all by providing all the lecture videos. I try to upload as soon as possible so that you boleh follow kalau you ada masalah internet ke apa I totally understand so the, the struggle is real kalau telefon uh, internet macam tak ok kadang-kadang kadang-kadang ok so it's not stable okay, but we need to like help each other lah so I provide you with the video because those time the seniors pun kami tak ada di recording function ni buat face to face kan so dia, dia orang belajar dekat kelas tu but at least now you are for recording you can listen back to so try to understand so the explanation that I'm giving uh, so you have more resources we try to use that to be a good engineer lah but at the end if you cannot be a good engineer it's no point Okay, company kena tutup. 
la university ni not like that okay. rising the soul for me and with this you will really see 